Hey, it's Mr. Bebe, and we're going to talk about the cycling of matter today in this lesson. So let's get right to it with your first key concept. Uh, matter cycles in and out of an ecosystem. We're talking about carbon, water, and nitrogen cycles here. So let's start with the water cycle, and this is a very familiar looking picture for a lot of you. Uh, we have water coming out of uh, plants and condensing in the atmosphere and raining back down and stored in the ocean. And uh, this is something that you should probably remember from, from middle school is uh, how water kind of cycles around, how we uh, get seepage and, and uh, rain precipitation and all that. So uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about here is the carbon cycle. So the carbon cycle, a little bit more complicated. Carbon is in a number of uh, different forms. One, uh, carbon dioxide is the one that we think of the most that's in the atmosphere. Uh, so how carbon cycles in and out is we breathe out carbon dioxide, plants take in carbon dioxide, and make glucose, which is a carbon-based compound. And that's one way that we can um, find uh, follow carbon actually how, as it goes through the entire cycle. Uh, carbon actually is stored in a lot of different areas too. Uh, these are called carbon sinks. And uh, the, where they're stored is places like the ocean. There's carbon sinks in there. Uh, it is stored in the atmosphere a little bit in that carbon dioxide. It's stored in forests and mostly in the soil because the carbon that's in the soil and trapped in there over time uh, under intense pressure and everything be, can become uh, fossil fuels, which we're very, very familiar with. We burn those. So onto the nitrogen cycle now. So uh, about 78% of our atmosphere is non-usable nitrogen. And this is a problem because we need it to be usable. We don't breathe it, but there's lots of things on the earth and organisms that require nitrogen. So uh, we are going to need the nitrogen to cycle between its usable and non-usable forms. So if it's non-usable, we need to make it usable. And this is a very, very, very important diagram. Did I say very important? I want you guys to be able to look at this and uh, identify where nitrogen goes from non-usable to usable forms and usable to usable and all of that. So for example, um, at the very, very top there, you've got non-usable to usable, uh, nitrogen fixation by nitrifying bacteria. That just means that there's some bacteria uh, that actually convert the non-usable nitrogen into usable nitrogen. And also when plants or animals die, um, their uh, dead matter on the bottom right, you can see there, uh, dead and decaying matter can be uh, that usable nitrogen recycled as usable nitrogen once again back into the soil. So take a look at this, pause if you need to, and, and copy down all the different ways that I nitrogen is cycled here. So now let's talk about the role of microorganisms in an ecosystem. Uh, so microorganisms are really, really small things that you have to see with microscopes, and they can actually help maintain the health of an ecosystem, or they can disrupt it. So first we're gonna talk about how they maintain the health of an ecosystem. So microorganisms can help in decomposition. So that means they are recycling organic matter. Uh, these are decomposers that free up that carbon and nitrogen and all these other nutrients so they can then be reused by the ecosystem. So decomposition is a, is a big role for microorganisms. The other is nitrogen fixation. So like I was saying before, some bacteria, some of these microorganisms can actually change nitrogen from a non-usable form into a usable form. And this is really, really important. Now this is a picture of some roots here that have little nodules on them. Those nodules are actually full of nitrogen fixing bacteria. So very important thing to know here. Uh, third thing is we have mycorrhizae, that's a, a mouthful to say, but it's a fungus that forms a, a mutualistic relationship with the plant. So the plant gives those mycorrhizae uh, carbohydrates in order for it to uh, survive, and the mycorrhizae allows the plant to absorb a lot more nutrients as a result. So that is one way the health of the ecosystem is helped maintained by some of these microorganisms. So now let's talk about how they disrupt. Um, the main example that we have here is something called algal blooms, so algae, whenever there's a huge amount of algae somewhere, like in the picture that you see. So when there's a lot of nutrients that come into an ecosystem, especially an aquatic one, you sometimes will get these algal blooms. And what happens is these algae hog all of that sunlight and they cause most of the plants in that area to die because if they're hogging the sunlight, plants can't get sunlight to make food and therefore they die. And what happens then after those plants die is the bacteria that eat the dead plants will come in and it starts to decompose those and it reduces the amount of oxygen that's available for other organisms in that area. And as you can see in that picture, you have a dead fish. 
um, because that fish doesn't have enough oxygen because of the algae. So that's one way microorganisms can disrupt. Um, humans can also disrupt uh, a ecosystem and we can do these in a lot of ways. So one way is poor farming practices. Uh, so we use a lot of fertilizers that can disrupt the ecosystem and if we are cattle farmers, uh, cows produce a tremendous amount of methane gas which is very bad for the atmosphere. Um, so if we don't have our uh, farming practices down, that can, this can be a huge problem. The other main way that you guys should know about for sure is that we burn fossil fuels. This is very much bad. Uh, we have uh, cars, factories, power plants that use fossil fuels in order to generate power. And this is just not a good thing for the atmosphere and the ecosystem. Uh, there are things uh, that naturally disrupt the, the health of an ecosystem. And just here is a graphic that kind of shows you a few of them. Again, this is something important to look at. You may need to pause the video in order to just kind of uh, read some of these things. But uh, you have volcanoes, you have landslides, earthquakes, forest fires. All of these things can actually disrupt an ecosystem naturally.